Hey everybody, we are back again with another edition of your Arts and Culture Spotlight. We have Angela Cato, who is their Marketing Director. Uh -huh. You cover all the facilities from City Arts to Century 2 to Indian Center to Cowtown. It's always a busy time in our <laughs> facility and the fall is no exception. There's a great things going on. And speaking of the fall, I know a lot of people are starting to think about Halloween. Absolutely. Cowtown, now mark this on your calendars, on October 25th, it'll be the second time, second year that Cowtown hosted Halloween trick-or-treating at night for kids. And it's a night of Hey Who's and Halloween from 5 to 8 p.m. And it's really a great time. Come out, kids will get candy, get a little spooked, family-friendly spooking, <laughs> and a great time for them. Do they just go from building to building there at Cowtown, or how does it they, work? They have lots of activities planned. Last year, um, a lot of the volunteers went in the streets and did a version of uh, Thriller, dressed up in all their costumes. It was kind of fun. I don't know if they have that plan for this year. They might. You might have to come out for some <laughs> surprises. Um, kids go around through all the buildings. There are volunteers and staff there with candy stations around the grounds. They had a fire pit with marshmallows and s'mores last year. Just a great opportunity. It really gives that um, fall feel at night. There's very few opportunities to go to Cowtown in the evening. So this is and get a little spooky because the buildings itself lend itself to a perfect backdrop. Well, I was going to say, haven't there been some ghost tours at Cowtown too? Cowtown is haunted, <laughs> uh -huh. some say. And yes, absolutely. We have a few buildings where there's been known to have some little images in the windows and um, some of our Wichita historical figures have stayed around. Mm -hmm. And so yes, Cowtown, <laughs> you talk about getting spooked, you actually have a real great opportunity to really get spooked. <laughs> but again, the staff there for the children try to really keep it family friendly, where the children aren't spooked too, too much. <laughs> there's a little headless horseman that, runs, that rides down the street. Um, it's great opportunities, but for the parents, they can look a little deeper and maybe have a little adventure of their own. Something for everybody. Yes, absolutely. So is this good for kids of all ages? Then? Kids of all ages, you can come in costume or not. And same for adults, come in costume or not. Mm -hmm. It's not required, it's optional. And it's $5 for all ages. So um, just, you know, good fun. And then what are the hours on that? 5 to 8 p.m. All right. So you'll get early evening to dusk around <laughs> October. You might get some real darkness there. And I know you also have a lot going on at Century 2 these days, some nationally known personalities coming to town. Absolutely. October is going to be very busy. We have a few events still left in September, but in October we have Alton Brown coming, Jack Hanna, the popular uh, animal guy, and also Straight No Chaser, which is an acapella group that has national and international accolades. So, and I don't know who this Alton Brown person is. <laughs> well, Alton Brown is a really entertaining guy who does some fun shows on the Food Network. And when you see his picture, you may not know him by name, when you see his picture, you'll immediately know who we're talking about. Well, I'll be looking forward to seeing that. And I know you guys have a couple more events left for September. Absolutely. Michael Feinstein, The Sinatra Project, presented by Wichita Symphony Orchestra on September 27th. The True TV and Practical Jokers, featuring the Tenderloins on September 29th. Holiday Galleria on October 2nd through the 5th. The Fit for Life Expo on October 11th. Hometown Favorites, presented by the Wichita Symphony Orchestra on October 11th and 12th. The 2014 Midwest Beer Fest on October 18th. The 2014 Silent Movie Night, Phantom of the Opera on October 18th. Laughing Feet Performers on October 24th and 25th. The Wichita Asian Festival on October 25th. Dances of the Americas, presented by the Wichita Symphony Orchestra on October 26th. Well, I know I'm looking forward to Holiday Galleria and a few <laughs> of those other events, too. <laughs> There's always fun not shopping opportunities. Great place to get unique gifts and art. And just in time for Christmas. <laughs> Absolutely. And then when you get done doing all that, there's still time left to sign up for our City Arts classes, right? City Arts is in the midst of its fall classes, and they start in September and go through the end of the year, actually. So there's lots of opportunities for adults and kids to come in here and have some fun. And we invite you to look at the City Arts Facebook page or wichita.gov under Arts and Culture. You can find the, the guide there. And also like to highlight there that they have the always popular Leonardo da Vino workshops for adults. There'll be one day on October 31st, Halloween night, November 14th, and December 19th. They're on a Friday evening. You bring the wine and City Arts provides the art project. I bet those are very popular. They're <laughs> actually gaining a lot of popularity. And what City Arts is doing with these one-day workshops, as well as the ones 
that are six weeks, four weeks, 10 weeks, is giving people options that your schedule, um, you can find something that fits your schedule at City Arts no matter what. What's the cost for that workshop? The workshop's only $25. Great thing for girlfriends mm -hmm. to come out and have fun. They're gonna be doing mosaics, one, e one of those evenings, paintings, another. And you don't have to be an artist. You just come out and have a little artistic fun. You come out multiple times and make lots of good art. Absolutely. <laughs> In fact, we should get you out there and bring some on the show sometime. <laughs> I would love it. That'd be so fun. <laughs> and let's see, what's left? Indian Center. And you have more exhibits and things going on there? Absolutely. The Indian Center is a great place right now. School started for the children. And we want to also let adults know there's never a time to stop learning. So as the kids are there, come by the Indian Center with your children or without. There's three great exhibits on display. One about Black Bear Bosun. He created the Keeper of the Plains sculpture, so everyone in Wichita has a connection to him. Another one is about the sacredness of feathers. And then there's another about the Indians in aviation. Um, so and if people want to learn more about those exhibits and if any related costs and things like that, well, how can they do that? The IndianCenter.org is the website, but also anytime call the Indian Center, 316-350-3340. The staff is there to talk to you and answer questions. One thing about the Indian Center is we want to make sure the, the entire community as a whole embraces it as their center. It's not for one segment, it's not just for American Indians. It's for all segments of our populations to come and learn about the history of Wichita. Black Bear Bosun, again, is, has created something with the Keeper of the Plains mm -hmm. that benefits our entire community. It brings in visitors. It has families going there in the evenings. You should see the number of cars there in the evenings when the fire pots go up. So it's really something for everybody. It's not a center that's just for one specific person. Great learning opportunity for absolutely, sure. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And then there's one other thing that the Indian Center is doing on November 1st. It's a little bit um, down the road, but mark your calendars. They're doing their first ever 5K run and walk called Culture Dash. And it's in the spirit of Day of the Dead. And it's at 9 a.m. on November 1st, so not too early that morning. Mm -hmm. And come out and there's a, it's a flat course and that runs along the Arkansas River and ends at the foot of the Keeper of the Plains. And we encourage you to register now. There is a deadline to ensure you get a t-shirt. So we encourage you know, people to come and look it over be a beautiful place to run. So they go to the Indian Center's website for information on the race? Today. Yes, there is. There's okay. a little button at the end of the page that says Culture Dash, and you'll have everything you need to know. All right, I'll start training. <laughs> Absolutely, we'll get you a t-shirt. All right, thank you, Angela. And thank you guys for watching this edition of the Arts and Culture Spotlight.